Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. Thank you for taking the time to, to join me today. And this is actually for something that is quite long overdue. I've been doing one-on-one -on -one work for coming up 15 years now, and it's been a long time that I've been thinking about doing group coaching. And so this is what I wanted to talk about today in terms of what I'm wanting to, to do. And I know for a lot of clients or for a lot of the, the audience, they, they follow me, they listen to my podcast or read my blogs. And, and this is then a chance to go from just reading information or hearing information and then translating that into taking action and, and taking action to reach a place of recovery. And as you may be aware, I think I put this in, in the emails, like this is a, a beta. And what a beta means is this is the first time I'm running this. I will be doing everything live as part of it. And what a beta does is it allows me to kind of test out this material and for you to get it at a, at a lower price because I'm testing it out. And when I say test it out, it's not new stuff that I've never done before. It's stuff that I work on with, with clients. It's just testing it out in terms of a, a group setting. And I know for a lot of people, they reach out and they're, they're unable to work with me, whether that is because of they can't afford the one-on-one the -on -one work or I don't have spaces available. And so this is then a way of being able to help more people in, in a more affordable way. And so what I want to do as part of today is I'm going to kind of walk through what's on offer as part of the program, how that's going to be delivered, et cetera. And then I'll give you a chance to ask questions after that. So let me just share my screen. I'm going to have to jump out of the sharing screen every now and again, because um, I, I had an email from a couple of people saying they're going to join later. And so I'll just need to come back out so I can get in and, and let people in. But let me just... Uh... So can everyone just type in the chat box just to let me know that you're able to see to see the screen and and the slides. Okay. Okay. Cool. So the course is called the the fundamentals of full recovery. And why is this not working? That's better. And so as part of the program, um, what I'm going to walk through through it is the exact framework and, and processes that I use when working with clients. And what you'll get is like an understanding of how to fully recover so you can live a meaningful life that's in alignment with, with your values. And I think the thing with this is eating disorders are more than just symptoms. They, they create a lot of lack in a life they, they impact on your ability to have meaningful relationships to go on holidays to eat out with friends it, there's lots of different areas that they impact on especially in terms of someone's values and, and living a life that way and so we're going to be looking at that eating disorders affect the body and affect in many different ways and i want to look at part of the physiology, the psychology, the society, the environment, like how all of these things play out and what needs to be done differently so one can recover. And recovery is hard. <laughs> I've been doing this for a really long time. Like I don't have a personal experience of recovering. I've never had an eating disorder and I would not wish it on my worst night enemy. Like it is a horrible thing to have to go through and it is tough. And it's tough because you can know the things you need to do and then struggle to actually do them. And that's because there are lots of uncomfortable thoughts and feelings and sensations that arise. And so it's looking at like how to then start to navigate that so that even when that does happen, you can take the action that is required. And when working through this stuff, there's lots of different frameworks that I have with clients and 
when I think about the work that I do with clients, it really comes down to these three main areas. And I'm, I'm going to talk about this framework so called the Simplifying Success Framework. And this is really how I've structured the program. And it's how I structure everything when I work with clients, but it's what I've used as kind of like an overview. If I, if I think of a, I don't know, a 10,000 feet view of, of everything I work on, this is how it how it kind of all sits together. And so as part of this framework, there, there are three main areas. And there are these three main areas that are really everything that I work on with people. And the first area is state. And the state is the physical state that your body is in. It's the, the amount of energy that you've had coming in, you have coming in, how depleted you are because of the energy not coming in. It's the amount of recovery that needs to take place from a from a physiological standpoint. It's the, the symptoms that are arising because of this. It's where your, your nervous system is and how your nervous system has an impact on the state that you're in and how you experience the world. The next piece is then story. And, and story is the thoughts that you have, the, the, the beliefs that, that arise, the, the, the meaning that you give to different situations, the emotions or sensations that come up. And really this is like the communication that your, your body and your mind is, is giving to you and what you then do with that information. And then the third part is then structure. And structure is what is your day-to-day -day look like? What are you doing in terms of when you get up, your eating, your social connection, your hobbies, your movement? Like what does your day-to-day -day look like? And all three of these things, story, state, structure, are all interconnected. And when things are going well for someone in recovery, it's because one or many of these things are working well. And when things aren't going so well in recovery, it's because one or many of these things isn't working well. And so they are all interconnected. And when I'm thinking about this from a recovery standpoint, recovery is about action taking. Like success is taking positive action. And the opposite of taking action is avoidance. And I'm a big believer that eating disorders are disorders of avoidance. And this is true of many different anxiety disorders, but the way to deal with this is by taking action. And action taking is what leads to recovery and not taking action is what leads to, to being stuck. And each of these different areas, that, that state, that story, that structure has an impact on is action being taken. And so this is really the framework of which this course is built on, this program is built on, where we then go into more detail in each of these different areas and how they're important for recovery and the impact that they're having, whether that's in an upward spiral or it's happening in a, in a downward spiral and, and is putting you further and further away from recovery. So does that make sense? Are people able to just type in the chat if the, the simplifying success framework makes sense, if they can understand that? Okay, cool. Let me just come out of this for one second. I just want to see if there's anyone I need to just let in. Okay. Okay, cool. So that we've we've gone through that. Uh, and so I now want to go through the the overview of, of what's included in, in the 12 weeks. And so the first call starts on the 23rd of May 
and it continues for 12 weeks. It's not, uh, uh, th there's one day that is not on, on the Tuesday and I'll, I'll get to that in, in a moment. Um, the, the calls are gonna be 90 minutes. They're gonna be delivered through Zoom. So in a, in a very similar way to we're doing here or probably in the exact way that we're doing here. Um, calls will include me sharing content. It will be me doing live coaching and there'll be time for answering questions as well. And so it, it's kind of like a hybrid of me teaching and then doing things live and then you getting to have your questions answered. Between calls, there will be homework and this can be journal exercises. It will be practical exercises. It will be a lot of action taking and there will be then goal setting as well and, and working towards this during the time together because I, I really want to kind of hammer home that point of this isn't just about more information like that it's a transformation instead of information it's how do you take information and then put it into action because otherwise nothing nothing changes and if you can't attend live one there will be recordings but two you can submit questions by email and then i can answer them on on the call So if I go through each of the, the weeks, so the first week, one of the things we'll be looking at is like what causes eating disorders and, and, and why they persist. And we'll, I like the sort of biopsychosocial model of eating disorders and sort of unpacking some of that. I have a lot of different frameworks and metaphors that I think are, are really important when going into recovery or going through recovery. So looking at those and how they can then support mindset in recovery. We then sort of introduce or I introduce self-compassion. And I, I think self-compassion is hugely important for recovery. And so this will be just getting into it. And then we'll we'll get into it further as we as we go through the course. In week two, we're looking at the importance of energy for the state that the body is in and for recovery. And the physiological state and the energy that is coming in is crucial for the health of the body, but also for recovery. So this is something we'll go into in a lot of detail. We'll look at the different kinds of restriction that can be can be can be happening, and looking then at like what recovery eating can look like. And with the recovery eating, it can look like lots of different things. And so we will have a have a bit of a an investigation into that and talk about that. But again, this is where there's going to be some suggestion of taking some action. And so starting to make some changes then in terms of eating. And here we'll also look at how to start creating some space between yourself and your thoughts. And this is known as in, uh, diffusion and is really sort of an introduction into acceptance and commitment therapy. And acceptance and commitment therapy is something I use a lot with clients, I think it is very helpful. And so we'll start to look at some of the, the techniques in terms of the diffusion aspect of acceptance and commitment therapy here. So week three, we're gonna look at how the nervous system impacts on your state. And this is really an introduction to polyvagal theory. And polyvagal theory is one of the most important things that I work on with clients. And, and I think it is, something that I'm continuing to explore more and more. And the, the good thing with this as well is it's really helpful long-term. And so this isn't just, so oh, this is useful for recovery. This is something you'll use forever. And so we, we'll kind of look into what is polyvagal theory, all of the different states as part of polyvagal theory, window of tolerance, all of these different concepts connected to that and how to then take that and use it very practically and to look at like what that means in terms of recovery. We'll then as well during this week, do a further exploration into self-compassion and, and self-compassion in recovery and looking at why it's important and, and some of the, the research around this and how you can then further develop that self-compassion. Week four is really a very practical week. And this is looking at different ways for managing story and state. And this will be then sort of expanding on a lot of the stuff from both polyvagal theory in terms of practical 
exercises as well as acceptance and commitment therapy. And so looking at how do you create safety cues and, and safety anchors and looking at how to deal with difficult thoughts and feelings and sensations as, as they arrive. And as I said, I, some of that we'll have dealt with earlier on, but it's just more, more exercises, more ways of being able to deal with this. Week five is a live Q&A. And so there'll be no new material this this that week. It gives you a chance to, to catch on what everything we've been doing. It'll give you a chance to, there'll be have been homework that you'll be working on. It might be doing some of the, the suggestions in terms of the acceptance and commitment therapy or the, the polyvagal stuff. And so I can then be doing some live coaching then. I can be answering any questions that people have during that, what, that time. So let me, one more sec, I just want to, come out of this for a second and just see if there's anyone else waiting to be let in. No. Okay. Cool. So week six then is looking at exercise and the impact of exercise and movement on recovery and how this has an impact on, on state and really like how to navigate exercise in recovery. So reduction, abstinence, psychological flexibility, learning other coping skills. I mean, this is something that comes up a lot with clients and so is really, really important. We'll also then look at understanding grief and how this is connected to recovery. Because I, I do truly believe that recovery is a very grief-filled process. And so how to be able to, to navigate that and how to use just the lens of grief to be helpful, to be like, oh, okay, I, I'm feeling angry here, or I'm, I'm noticing I'm bargaining or, or whatever it may be, like, oh, this, this makes sense. So week seven, we'll be looking at body image and fears connected to weight gain. And this is something that obviously comes up a lot. And so it will be useful to have a talk about this, see what comes up. We will then be looking at body checking and weighing and other methods of control that is kind of connected to the, the body image piece. And then sort of looking sort of separately at things like trauma and neurodiversity and anxiety and how these affect recovery. And it's not going to be a deep dive into any of those areas. I mean, you could do a whole course purely on trauma and eating disorder recovery or purely on neurodiversity and eating disorder recovery, but it will be creating uh, some awareness around, around these, these things. And okay, is this something that, that needs some further exploration? So the next one is looking at identity and values. And this is one of the big things that I work on with clients. It's quite a long writing exercise connected to this, but I think identity and values and then priorities are really important as part of recovery and being able to understand what your values are and using these as, as like a North Star in helping to facilitate recovery. So this is something that there'll be a writing exercise and quite a long writing exercise beforehand. And then we can come and explore that as part of, as part of this. We'll also look at beliefs and, and mindset in terms of like where beliefs come from and how your beliefs are affected by the, the state that you're in and how the mindset is affected by the state you're in and kind of coming back to the polyvagal piece and then looking at other ways that recovery is impacted. So sleep and digestion, during week nine, we're going to have a break week and we're going to have no call and no content that week. And it's just for you to use the time to, to catch up. By then, we'll have covered quite a lot of information and you'll probably be quite thankful to have a little bit of a break and a little bit of a breather to then catch up on, on some of that stuff. And then week 10, we're going to look at weight set point and the body's ability to regulate itself and regulate its weight. We're going to look at then sort of setting your day up for success. 
And this is sort of the first time on the screen that it's got like structure in brackets after, after any of these. You, there is lots of structure stuff that will be happening before, before this point. But this is where we start to look at some of the structure stuff more specifically and looking a lot at things like avoidance delay and, and versus taking action. And this could be sort of fear foods or fear situations or different fears connected to exercise or clothes shopping or whatever it may be. And then week 11, we'll be looking at intuitive eating in recovery. And I've intentionally put this right at the end because I think intuitive eating is wonderful. And there's lots of other things that are worth exploring more in detail. And it's, it's not that I don't think intuitive eating can be used from recovery from the start, but it, it's nuanced. And most people turn intuitive eating into the hunger and fullness diet. And that's just not what it's really about. So we'll start to look at intuitive eating and recovery. We can have conversations around how that would work, what, what that looks like as part of recovery. We'll talk about relapse and ups and downs of recovery because it isn't linear. It, it's two steps forward, one step back and how to navigate that. And, and really in a lot of ways, like managing expectations. And then looking at like what full recovery looks like and how long it will take to get there. And, and, and the spoiler alert with this one is like, there is no defined amount of time that it's going to take. It will take a different amount of time, depending on how long you've been in the eating disorder, or how quickly you're able to, to eat more food or cease the exercise or whatever it may be for recovery. But I guess it's like giving some expectations around this piece because it's it's very often that people can feel like oh I've been doing this for three months and and it it's just not it's just not working for me, and I know I've entitled this program like the fundamentals of full recovery. You are not going to be fully recovered by the end of the twelve weeks. Like full recovery is is a long process, and what I'm wanting to do as part of this program is like show you what I think are the fundamental building blocks to get you there, and as part of this like week eleven exploring some of the stuff that then comes afterwards but it's it's more like if you start to, to to do these things and to really take action you will get there it's just going to take time and then the final week is again a QA and a week and this gives you a chance to ask further questions connected to any of the stuff that we've gone through connected to where you're at what you're you're doing well with, what you're struggling with. And yeah, just to to really have that final chance to to ask anything that you want. And so I want to just go through who this is for and just give me two seconds again because I can see that there's a couple of people waiting and I just need to let them in. So one sec. Okay. Okay. So who is this for? So this is a good fit for you if you're ready to recover and you want the guidance and support to make this a reality. As I said at the start, this isn't just about more information. Like This is about how do you actually make the steps for recovery. So if you're like, I'm ready to recover, I just need the guidance and this is for you. And look, I want to say that no one is 100% fully on board. There's always tons of ambivalence. There's always like, I'm, uh, I want to do this and I don't want to do this. And, and so it's not that you have to be like 100% on board, but it's the I want to recover. I, I want to get some help with this. If you've been trying to do it by yourself, by watching YouTube videos or listening to podcasts or reading blogs, like if this is you and you're like, I need some more guidance apart from just more information, then this is the right program. If you've been focusing solely on going all in and this has been your only recovery plan, then this is for you. I think that 
eating more food and getting more energy in is incredibly important as part of recovery, but it is not everything. And there is a lot more to recovery than just having more food come in. And so that's part of what I want to share. Or the alternative to kind of the just doing the food piece is the, I've been focusing a lot on the psychology and the therapy part. I've been exploring my childhood. I've been exploring my relationship with my mom. I've been exploring this thing that happened in school. All of those things are great. But if it's just been the exploring, but then it's staying in the realm of theory and there's no action taking, then this is also for you. Because as I said, this is about how to then take action to actually recover. And the other one is if you've been trying to recover, but you're doing it in that very sort of ED approved way. So you're eating a little bit more or you've taken down your exercise a little bit or I'll, I'll, I'll recover, but uh, I, I, as soon as there's any sign of weight gain, then I'm, I, I'm stopping. So if there's been any of that kind of thing and you're now ready to, you know what, I, I want to do this properly, then this is for you. This is not for you if you aren't ready to recover or you want to be convinced that you should do it. Whenever I have my initial chats with people for one-on-one -on -one work, I always say, like, I'm not in the convincing game. Like, I can't convince you all of the reasons why you should recover. And the more I try and convince you, the more it's going to just bring up the other side of you that tells me all the reasons why you shouldn't do it. So if you need convincing, then this is not what is on offer here. If you're simply looking for more information but don't want to take action, then don't waste your money. I put out so much content on a podcast, on my blog. There's so many people putting out good quality content that if you just want to have more content, do that instead. So this is for not just more information, is like taking action. If you need lots of handholding or if you struggle and want like exact thing to do every step of the way, then this is not for you. And what is on offer as part of this course is that we will do the, the calls and I'm there for that, that 90 minutes. I'll answer those questions, but that, that is the, the program. So it's not that there's then email support outside of the program. It's not, can I be messaging outside of the program? Like you can send messages for questions that I ask, answer in the program, but, but that's it. And with this piece as well, like even when I'm working with a client, like this is an inpatient. I, I can't do anything for you. I can't cook meals. I can't sit with you and make sure you eat. I can't do any of those things. So this is very much like we can go through all of these ideas. And I mean, when working with a client, it's collaborative. It's like, let's come up with the ideas of, of how to do this. And then you need to be able to, to do it. And I always say the best plan is the plan someone will follow. And so it doesn't matter how good a plan I come up with. It's like, what are you able to do? And so this is the part where, yeah, you need to be able to take action of your own accord based on the information and based on the decisions that you make. And this is obviously not for someone who just wants one-on-one -on -one stuff and doesn't want to be in a group setting because this is going to be a group setting. This is how this information is going to be, to be shared. And there is going to be um, group interaction as part of this. So if that's not what you're after, then this isn't, isn't for you. So in terms of the, the, the details, so with the program there, there are two payment options. So there is either one payment in full of 897 pounds, or you can do 347 per month for three months. And this is actually at a significantly reduced price. And I, I'm doing it at this reduced price because this is a beta. I'm recording all the content live and delivering it all live. And that's why I'm doing it at this reduced price. But because of that as well, that there's no refunds provided for, for this beta. And for those who do participate, you'll have lifetime access to this program. 
and you can participate in it in all future rounds at, of the program and no extra cost. So I'm planning on this being something that I do at this stage will be twice a year. And so the next one I'm planning on doing, it'll be sort of late September time, maybe early October. And so when I do that, then if you sign up for the beta, you're able to, to do that. And then every time I, I do the program, you can, you can do the live version. And so if you want a chance to work with me, this is kind of the lowest price possible. So if this is something you want to do, then this is um, kind of the program that I would suggest. And as a kind of bonus for this, um, there's a for the first three people who, who sign up, I will offer a free 45 minute consult with me um, to assist you. And you can do this at any point during the 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 program it could be done after the program but we can then have some some one-on-one -on -one time to to talk about what's going on and, and what you need help with for that free 45 minute consult and that as i said is for the first three people who who sign up in terms of the dates these are the dates of of when i'm going to be to be doing it it will be tuesdays always except for that third week with the the 8th of june when i have to do it on thursday my parents are over for the first time uh, i'll be seeing them since uh 2020 the very beginning of 2020 so i'll be um having to do it a little later on that that week um so that's when all of the different calls are as i said during week nine there's a, a break week and so there's no call and the recordings will be sent after all the live sessions and as I said, th this opportunity is not lasting long. Um, the sign up for it is Wednesday, the 17th of May. And after that, you'll need to wait till September time. And as I said, it will be a significantly higher price point. What I'm charging now is probably about half of what I'm going to charge. That That's kind of how I thought about it, of like doing the beta at, at half price, because I want to get people in. I want people to, to sign up. I want people to participate. And I want to start doing more of this kind of group coaching. So if you do want to participate, if you've listened to this and thought, this is actually what I, I really want, then send an email to info at seven-health.com, which is the email that you will always receive if you're on my mailing list. And I think everyone who is on this call is on my mailing list because it's haven't done any advertising in, in Facebook or anything along those lines. So the normal email that you get from me, you can just send an email to that saying group program, and then I can send over the details of, of how to, to sign up. So that is it in terms of what I want to, to talk about in terms of what's on offer with the program. So what I can do now, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And what you can do is either unmute yourself and ask any questions if you have any, or you can write it in the, the chat box and then I can, I can read it and I can respond. So are there any questions? Chris, um, this is Alice. Hey Alice, uh, how you doing? Uh, hi, uh, Tuesdays are like the worst um, time for me. So I'm not going to be able to participate um, okay. on the live calls. So will this work for someone like me that's pretty much going to be on the recordings? And maybe I can join the Thursday calls um, and um, and a rare Tuesday also. Sure. Um, so, I mean, the, the thing is you can submit your questions um mm -hmm. so that i can then answer them answer them on the on the calls and so it i mean you're the one that was is going to need to to decide that that piece of like you're, you're going to get all of the recordings that there are are there it i guess it's for you like how much of a participator are you because there's going to be a lot yeah. of people who are on live calls who never ask a single question if you're like i'm probably going to be one of those people then it probably won't matter too much that you're not there. If you're like, yeah. no, I'm going to be asking questions every single time and I'm going to be a real participator, then that's probably going to have more of an impact on you that the calls aren't at the right time for you. And the recordings will be like this, like, and I'll see the handouts. Yep. Yeah, you'll get there. Okay. They're, 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 okay. Everything that is shared is part of the recording. So what you'll get in terms of the recordings, you'll get 
this recording, I will then share a, a copy of the of the slides. Uh, okay. If there's any books I make reference to during the call, if there's any podcasts, if there's any material, I will send like there, there'll be some links notes. connected to that. So there'll be some notes. Okay. And then like any handouts or any homework that I make reference to will be will be in that folder. Uh, I, I'm going to just do it all through through Google Drive. So that's okay, that will work. people use Great. Google Drive. Um, it's a very easy way of just being able to, to, to share everything. And then you you get to keep all of those things forever. You can then download all of those things onto your own onto your own computer. And so, yeah, you, you'll have all of that there. OK, that'll work. Thank you. OK, perfect. So any any other questions? Hi, Chris. Um, yes. I have a quick question, actually. Sure. Um, just in terms of how much we'll all sort of interact together during the time, given the last question, you know, too, but like how much the group relies on the kind of group dynamic of it or like sharing personal stuff like how much do we go into that sort of aspect of things given i'm assuming we're all in you know different like it'll apply to all of us but we're all yep. going to need very specific things just you know what are your plans for how to moderate that and how much does it rely on us interacting as it were okay and so at this point at least with the beta version the the group sharing will will probably be a lot more kind of coming through me so like in terms of okay there's a someone has a question and then me and that person will then have the interaction around uh, around that question and so getting to know others in the group through that uh, more than you kind of and, and look if people want to then set things up where they buddy up with someone or they they want to go down that route then we can then I can kind of ask that. And if people want it, we can we can set it up. But in terms of when we're doing the calls, there's probably not going to be a huge amount of like everyone talking to each other as such, at least within this version. So the the, the plan is with the next version is a lot of the content that I'm then going to be sharing will then become recorded content. And then as part of the, the weekly calls, there'll be a lot more sort of implementation calls and so there will probably be more more interaction then or there could be uh, you can set up different communities where they're uh, like the i hate facebook <laughs> and so it will not be a facebook group but it will be some other app that allows you to do a, a similar kind of thing like that's that's where i'm envisioning it, it going but it at, for, for this one not not so much thanks and yeah i saw there were some other questions sorry if that was redundant a bit but um that's very helpful. Thank you. Okay, cool. Um, so, so yeah, the question from Amber, do you envision these sessions involving a lot of group discussion, participation, or more of a lecture format with opportunity for questions? Probably more of a lecture format with opportunity for questions, but where, as I said, there's going to be homework stuff that I, that I will do. And with that, with, with some of them, it will make sense to say, hey, who wants to share? Who wants to go through this? And I, I can send out emails in advance of like, can, if anyone wants to share, send over this piece of homework and then we can go through it. And so it will be more like live coaching or you, you seeing me have an interaction with someone as opposed to group discussions. Although based on that, I'm like based on that interaction, if it feels appropriate and the, the, the participant is okay, I'm happy to then open that up for, for discussion if, if that feels like the right thing to do. But as I said, yeah, it, it's probably more lecture format with the opportunity for questions and then live coaching. And the next question is, would this be appropriate for someone who is a year or two into recovery already? Do you have concerns about this person's experience having a negative influence on people who are new to recovery? Um, are you able to unmute yourself, Eliza? Are you able to unmute yourself? And I just want to understand what you mean by 
concerns about this person's experience having a negative influence on people who are new to recovery? Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously I've been in recovery for about a year and a half and, you know, it can be, I, I've gone through some very unpleasant things. Yep. And if that were to come up in discussion or in questions, I don't know. I worry about that turning some people off. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. Yeah. And so, so two things that, that come up, like one, I want people to use their discretion. So if you already think, okay, this is something that I think is going to turn people off. Okay. Maybe I'm, maybe don't, don't mention it, but two, I want people to understand that recovery is messy. Like I, I think too often online, all we see is these really lovely recovery stories of like, I started recovery and nine months later, I I'm like fully recovered and blah, blah, blah. Or like, it's just not the reality of what recovery is like. And yeah. I would prefer someone to like share this part and for us to be able to then like hold space and talk about that and talk about the, the difficulties of what's coming up and the emotions and all of those pieces, because I do think too much of that is missed in what is written about with recovery. Yeah. And look, I, I will say part of the reason it's taken me so long to do this in a group setting is a similar kind of concern that you have there. I've seen how competitive mm -hmm. eating disorders are. And you put a whole, you put a group of people with eating disorders in a room, it does not always work so well. And so what I'm going to, and this is like one of the things I'm going to talk about in, in the, the sort of the first week of this, of like, I want people to, to really bring their best selves to this in terms of, yeah, you can have comparisons thoughts that, that come up, but recognizing them as, as thoughts. I mean, like, how do I be best supporting my recovery and the recovery of of others and that doesn't mean not talking about the difficult stuff it does but it's as i said like some some level of discernment or is this useful to share is this helpful to share um and as i said i i will hopefully if we're having that discussion i will want to be a guide with some of that stuff like i i will ask for other questions if i think it's if it's it's relevant yeah thank you does that, does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I would think it would come up, you know, people talking about their weight gain, people talking about symptoms they're having. Um, yeah. And I think that I was dealing with that early on, you know, I'm still dealing with it. So, yeah. Um, so I, it <clears throat> sounds like it's, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And look, the, I I need to then have a think about like, okay, there there should be there could be certain things where like, okay, let's not mention these specifics because I think certain things right. can be can like be wait. <laughs> yeah, can be can be triggering. Um, yeah, and, and like weight and calories and etc. Et but it again, I think it's a really hard thing to navigate because I I think sometimes there there can be usefulness in in some of that being shared and so yeah I, I i envisage that this will be a messy process and this is why i'm doing this <laughs> as a beta. and that is what recovery is like and yeah but that there i i also envisage i will make mistakes and i will then put my hands up and say i made a mistake there i i want to do something differently or whatever it may be but yeah i i i I don't think there is a nice, easy, hermetically sealed way of doing this. Yeah, hence this being a test run. <laughs> hence this being a test run, exactly. Uh, Chris, this is Jenny, and I, hey, I want to say that, hi, um, I appreciate what you just said, and to Eliza, too, um, uh, I would look, I would be highly interested in this group if we are all coming as our authentic selves and truly just allowed to be human, which includes what Chris just said, how messy recovery is. And I know in the past in other groups where everybody is so 
concerned about crossing their T's and dotting their I's and behaving well that, you know, you come out of it almost more self-critical than going in and having a space where we can just be honest, I feel like would be more beneficial, you know, certainly with, with some discernment and, um, but not to the point where there's so many rules that we just feel like we're showing up to a lecture. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I, 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 I hear you. And thanks for bringing that up, Eliza, too, that um, I'm glad that this was brought, this was brought up because now this platform seems even more attractive where we can just come in and, and say, look, this is what I'm going through right now in recovery. Is this normal? Or does anybody have uh, any support or, you know, anyways, that I just wanted to say thank you for bringing it up and for Chris for um, being honest with us about that. So. Cool. Thank, and thank, awesome. thanks for saying that, Jenny. And look, the thing I, I've worked with people all across the weight spectrum. I work with people eating a tiny amount of food and eating a ton of food. And the reality is they are often affected in the exact same ways. And so I think there is some benefit in being able to, to, to hear that and see that and recognize that. And so, yeah, I, I want to have sort of an openness of people being able to, to share exactly what they're, they're going through. And I mean, this is part of so much of what I, I work on in terms of the eating disorders are about avoidance. So how, how do we deal with ideas or things that, that scare us and then sit with those things? How do we have uncomfortable emotions that arise and be able to, to sit with that and navigate that? And so again, if there's discernment that is needed, but I also wanna have this be a very open space so that people can share vulnerably and can talk about what's been happening and, and how they've been feeling. And it's not like positive vibes only that, that we are getting to see the, the, the real messiness of what recovery looks like. So let me just see what else is people lost. Uh, thank, thank you for your comment, Julie. Okay. So I've got some comments, but nothing in, in terms of different questions. So is there any other questions that anyone has connected to this? Uh, Chris, I have, I guess, a basic question. The calls, sure. I think you said they're going to be 90 minutes, yeah, roughly. And then, um, I don't know, it's kind of a hard question, but how much of that do you think is you talking versus us talking um my, my goal would be and look it'll depend on the different on the different weeks yeah. for example like week four is going to be very practical and so there's going to be a lot of interaction um i would imagine somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour is going to be me doing more of the talking and then it'll be q a and, and it kind of depends like Again, this is the first time I'm doing it. I don't know how much participation there's going to be. I don't know how many questions there's going to be. Mm -hmm. I would love it that I was talking less in lecture format mm -hmm. and it was much more of an interaction. And so I guess this will depend on the group and the group dynamics and, and what you know, kind of the stars how align to, 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 to have happen. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I ask it because I, I probably will miss a lot of the calls. So, um, but I can gain a lot from hearing what others are saying. Yeah. Yeah. And this is like, I want and that, that group participation because I think yeah. there's, it brings it all to life. 
So mm -hmm. like I can I can talk about okay what's happened with a with this client or that client or what I've noticed etc. But it's it's much more impactful if I can then have a have a direct conversation with someone. And so as much as possible, I will be I'll be wanting to do that so that there is there is that interaction and it does start to to change the feeling of the group from just I'm sitting here I'm listening to information as opposed to actually I feel like I'm participating and I'm seeing that person who chatted two weeks ago talk about something else and and so yeah I, I want it to feel like a group instead of a, a lecture and if I'm not there and I email you and it's something pertinent you could discuss that in the group too yes um, and that that would be that yeah. would be it yeah okay great thank you yeah uh so like i said what time did you say the calls are so the calls are the same time as as we started today and so that they will always be at that time i blocked out like i'll i'll also again i don't know how long the calls will will run for and if they need to run longer than that i will make sure i don't have anything immediately after so if if we need to go long we can go we can go long and people and people can get their their questions answered um, and then the next question was like, how many people will be in the group? Do you have a limit? This is something I've been I've been thinking about, and it will. It's hard to know in terms of because, like, for example, with Alice, if, if Alice signs up, she's not going to be on any of the the calls. So it, it's that thing of like, how do I get enough people so that if people aren't showing up live, there's still enough interaction. And so my thought was somewhere around about 30 people as a, as a limit, as an upper limit, knowing that the reality is that maybe half of those people are going to show up live each week. Like even if like six of the calls you show up live and then the other ones you watch recordings. So it, it's trying to get that sweet spot between too few people. To, so there's, there's not enough interaction um, and too many people that people feel kind of overwhelmed and, and and don't interact or there's just not a chance to to answer everyone's call but that that's what i'm thinking and it will just depend on how many people sign up does that does that sound answer your question and just like as a piece of feedback would 15 people on a call feel too many or with 30 people on a call feel too many just i i couldn't say i mean okay. i'm sure there's, i'm sure there's going to be people who love to talk <laughs> There, yeah. there always is yeah so, but uh, you know again it's a trial we're 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 helping you we're helping each other figure out how to do this i think it's a great idea okay perfect yeah. thank you thank you for saying that okay cool annika 15 sounds okay to me perfect so chris i normally email you at chris yeah, you you can yeah. Do the info it, instead. Uh, it doesn't this. it doesn't really matter either of those either of those work. It's just yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay, any any other questions before I I wrap this up? Okay. Well, look, thank you everyone for, for coming on the, the call live today and, and um, showing interest in this, this new, this new venture that I'm trying to, trying to get started. And this is something that I, I think will be where I'm heading with, with more of the stuff that I, I put out and yeah, I would, I would love to, to get this started and to have a really nice group and to be able to, share what I do with with one on one clients in in this setting. So yeah, if this sounds like something that you're interested in, in send an email to info at seven hyphen health.com. And just use the the subject line of, of group program. As I said, there's for, for the first three people who who email in, um, you get the 45 minute session for for free. So yeah, thank you so much for your time. I, I really appreciate everyone coming on today. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. It was Thanks, good to meet Chris. you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys.